Two. Test. Three, four. We're talking today, November 11th, 2001, with Mrs. Dorothy Camo of Grovedale on the subject of the early days down in the South Wapiti and what life was like in the mountains back then, I guess. Okay. Well, you were just getting started when I cut you off there to get the tape going. But uh, I guess uh, I guess we should start at the beginning and how you came to to be living down here and about when that was. And <coughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Well, uh, about 1933, uh, my husband uh, became a forest ranger. At that time, it was a, a very necessary thing because there was a lot of uh, fires and a lot of timber that took wood burn. However, he he was a fire ranger, forest ranger, and. Uh, we lived in the South Denver Grand Prairie, and he found it very difficult keeping horses in there, and uh, especially winter. And he, had, he decided we, we would come out and live in this, this area where, the, where he was a ranger. So we did come in '33. He became a forest ranger in 33. We came out in 39. Yes, and that's right. And, um, we went on south to here, where we are now, and uh, there was several families already out here in this, this what they call the Bridge Creek area. And uh, my brother Jack was one of them. And he had his family out here. There was Blanchettes. Uh, there was uh, Carl Daphne, and he was a bachelor. And Elf Graham, another bachelor. And uh, well, good. When when you said earlier you you were one of the first women here, uh, oh, who I would see. who would be one of the first when you got out here? That was. Oh. All these bachelors and and well, there was uh, some, not that many, but there was women here before me, like um, Mrs. Blanchett, Mrs. Jack Fenson. They were all of, they were here at that time, and uh, Mrs. Gubert, mm -hmm. Mrs. Gubert, and Mrs. Jenkins also were here, and, and uh, there was no school. And, uh, and were these people primarily homesteading or ranching out yes, here? Yes, eventually we were able to homestead, sort of. But at that time it wasn't surveyed either. So we were sort of taking chances, but we liked it out here. We thought we did. No school. That was difficult. We had to use the, the lessons from the government for the children. Correspondent. Yes. So, yes. Uh, and your husband was by this time working for the forestry. What what was his work like? Would it take him away from home summer or sometimes in the winter? What what was uh, his routine like? He had to go out. Uh, he'd make trips all around different areas, and uh, sometimes if. There was a fire, they had to look for it because there was no way. <laughs> we didn't have radios, or did, uh, did we at first? No. What? Did they have the radios? No. No. Uh, so typically, how, how long would he be gone for then? Oh, he used to be gone for weeks sometimes. Sometimes yeah. a whole month. He'd, he'd, just, um, he'd be um, gone on horseback then? Yes, he had to have horses. Uh, winter times, they you dog team sometimes. Really? Yes, really. Yeah. 
the horse is not so good no winter, but he was a great walker and he could walk for miles and miles and miles. And and when he was gone uh, for those times, uh, what what was life like for you running the? It wasn't too bad. Uh, I was uh, busy trying to teach the kids their ABCs and things like that. And uh, being alone in those days didn't bother me very much. But it uh, sometimes was kind of awkward. <laughs> but uh, we managed. Where was the nearest grocery store? Pardon? Where was the nearest grocery store? Well, it was uh, at the Baines, well, Baines General Store. It was. It was uh, a mile and a half north and a half a mile west of here. Just not yeah. far from the existing place now. The oh, no. And, uh, I thought Baines was farther across the uh, north huh? of us. What? I thought Baines was farther north of us. No, it was only two. It was a uh, mile and a half north. Oh. Mm -hmm. When we were out on the on the whole home homestead, that's where I meant. Well, it was eight miles through yeah. the back road to Baines. Yes, we built a log house back there, and uh, lived there for wait, mm -hmm. sixty-seven years or something. So you yeah. built you built a log house first. Yes. And that was on. Uh, your original place? The original place over here was uh, we built a log house there and uh, barns and shed. Yeah. We had cattle there. And, uh, so did you have, uh, obviously the, at the start the, the children would have been young, did you have other help in terms of taking care of the cattle and things when, uh, when people would be gone? The Phil and Fred were pretty good size. And wedge. Uh, uh, what year was it? Uh, uh, you were, uh, how old would you be at that time? Eh? How old would you be at that time? Me? Yeah. Well, I was I was ten when we arrived over in the, on the homestead, and mm -hmm. so. so Phil was no, I was five and. Uh, I was 12 when I got over here. Yeah. Yeah. So what, uh, when you think back on those years, what what sort of memories or pictures come to mind? What was what was life like for you back then? A daily routine when, when Pete would be gone? I mean, we enjoyed living over there. Uh, we had, uh, had some neighbors that were not too close, but everybody was a good walker in those days. You <laughs> had to be. <laughs> so uh, so we had my brother and uh, and his big family and uh, we had 11 children. <laughs> and then there was uh, the other neighbors. We would all get together once in a while and, and have a picnic or something like that. And, uh, they had dances in the world deal also. And uh, it wasn't long until Jack and I were playing for dances. <laughs> you used to play for dances? <laughs> Jack played the violin, I played piano. And uh, we, we kept that up for many years. <laughs> they didn't have very many over there, but over here, when we moved up here, that's when they had lots of dances and things like that. So would you climb in the wagon and pick mm -hmm. up neighbors along the way and head to the That's dance right. hall? Get in. Yeah. Horses, wagons. So. Yeah. Was it? Uh, do, do, was it? Do you remember being alone? Is that? You know, do you remember being alone a lot? Like, was it a lonely existence when when your husband would be working? Yes, or? we were home a lot. So. You know, there was no real rules. 
they were just trails, but at that time, uh, later when we got roads, we got cars and things. But we didn't stay in that, that location. We moved up here in uh, 45. So uh, then we were able to get uh, land uh, file on it legally in a long time. So we were, and then the next year or so we got a school. Things started getting civilized. <laughs> what um, what sorts of uh, things would Pete tell you when he came back from a long trip, especially back into the back country? Oh, he he'd have had some interesting times too. Sometimes, <laughs> uh, can you remember any of the stories you might tell when he came home after being gone for a few weeks? I can't seem to think of something like that. I remember that? Can you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, except. Uh, Maybe a horse would get away away from him and have to go for a day for it and meet the black bears quite often. Lots of bears. Yeah. Bears Did you ever worry about bears when you were left alone on the home place oh. without uh, your husband around? Uh, yes. Uh, I had to shoot one. It was coming in the house. <laughs> it was coming to <laughs> well, it, it, uh, it woke me up at night and uh, it was in the porch like and I looked up from where I was sleeping and here was this paws up like this and this bear was drooling down the glass <laughs> and <laughs> well there was nobody home. Uh, that was able to shoot, except and I couldn't do it very good, but uh, uh, I just scared him away that night, but the next day he came back in daylight and I did shoot him. But uh, sometimes you have to do those things, how, how did <laughs> whether you like it or not. <laughs> what, can you remember what kind of gun it was? Pardon? What kind of gun you shot him with? 30, uh, 30. My 30 out 6. 30 out 6. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the only time I had to shoot a bear, or anything else, actually. Yeah. I imagine uh, your husband made use of a game that was available around them. Game? Oh, we used to have our our venison, our moose meat, and stuff like that. And, uh, it was very, very good too. <laughs> Lots of moose meat. Lots of moose meat. Oh yes. How yeah. did you put it up when you didn't have a freezer in your ear? You used to can it. Yeah. Can hundreds of quarts yeah. of moose meat. And we're sitting out there. We would pack them into the, into the shed and a whole racks of a can of quartz cedars. Oh, moose are good provider. How do you uh, prepare moose meat to can it? How do you prepare moose meat to can it? In, in I hope you just cut it up, uh, clean it, cut it up, and. Uh, Start sterilize the jars and then put the meat in the jars, pack it in with some salt and, and uh, seal them uh, up not real tight. Uh, put them in the boiler and cook them for a certain time. I've forgotten how much, but uh, we used to can dozens of quarts of them. And, uh, not elk. We never had elk, did we, over there? No elk here, then. I don't know. Oh, no see. elk at all. Yes. There was deer, too. We didn't uh, get many. There wasn't many deer, either, was there? Well, back 
in, in Birch Creek and up there was a duck deer but who in the in the summertime we go go uh, you don't kill a big animal because uh, they're too too spoil or spoil too quick, eh? In the fall when they when they can they can when they keep for a while, you can kill a big one and then get a can before it'll spoil. So you didn't have electricity or anything like that either, yeah. and uh, natural gas for heat. So, mm -hmm. what was your day like? What was a typical work day for you like in terms of? Oh, I had to to uh, wash with the old washboard in the tub. <laughs> that was quite common. Had, uh, there was no. We didn't have washers up there or power tunnels, so. Uh, I think maybe some of the women had a different kind of washer that didn't require electricity, but I didn't have that. Uh, I was strong in those days and uh, young, so uh, there wasn't much I could do if I wanted to. So I had to sew their clothes, a lot of them, and, uh, and knit socks and things like that. And I was pretty busy. <laughs> I was going to say, you didn't have to think about what you were going to do with your day. Fire well, I couldn't do problem. it today. I'm 94 now. You're 94? <laughs> I couldn't do any of that today, I don't think. Firewood was a big job? Yeah, it was a big problem. Yeah. Although in the, in the fall we'd get up, we'd go to a, a place that burned off, and, and we'd haul in about 15 or 20 loads to a team on the wagon, a team and sleigh, and then the Joe Blanchett usually had a sawmill, a saw, saw, a bucking saw. He'd come around to the neighbors and everybody would be pitching in the pitch wood for for days on end there in the fall, getting them, getting a huge wood pile up. The whole community together. Yeah, every, every went to everybody's place and had enough for, for, the, for the winter. And then it was our job <laughs> to load them up and pack them in. How much wood would it take for a winter? Oh. In cords, I guess there must have been uh, 30 cords. Yeah. And that whole air tape was just about humping there for about a month. <laughs> so it was a, an air tight and a cook stove, I guess you had. Yeah. What, what was cooking like on a cook stove like compared to the range they have now? Yes, we'd have a, a cook stove and a uh, uh, irritate lower farmer. He had to, uh, must be nice, the cook stove could give a nice heat too, so, you know, it was, it was comfortable. How do you like cooking on a cook stove compared to an electric I, or a gas? I liked it. You didn't mind the... I think it's better than the electric one sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How about you getting around when, uh, again, when, when Pete would be gone, did you drive a team or ride or? I rode a horseback a lot, but uh, we pretty well stayed home uh, for, the, for that time. The boys were able to go over to, to the Baines, they had a little store there and uh a post office <laughs> so they were yeah. over they walked over sometimes i rode horseback i guess hey sometimes you rode horseback i had a dog team too in the winter time a dog team in the winter time did you ever drive the dogs no not me <laughs> <laughs> did you ever have a, a did you ever have a favorite horse oh yes we had 
my favorite horses. Can you remember one of your favorites? Yeah, it was Barney. <laughs> That's a good name for a horse. Barney and May. They were. They were a team that you also rode as saddle horses. Oh well, they were. They were just horses. They weren't fancy or anything. Pack horses. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. All purpose. Yeah. 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 What? What? How? How? How come you got along with Barney? What was? What was so nice about him? Pardon? What was so nice about Barney? Why did you get along with Barney? Oh, I don't know. He was just a good horse set, you know, and he was, you could handle him. Not that I did much of that. So the boys were always there to do that part. You could always catch him. Yeah. And that, yeah. Was, that was always one horse. That yes. You could, you could uh, go and get. That's a plus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know they're so wild. And what about the, what kind of dogs? When you say you drove dogs, what kind? Well, of we had the uh, head huskies, and they were they were a cross between you know mostly husky and uh, and a uh, Heinz fifty seven, mm -hmm. the rest of them, but big and husky fellows. We had three or four for a dog team, and uh, we'd well we'd race hell on the way to the to the store for with the neighbors' cats. <laughs> the driving dogs, I had a husky one time, we used to get them to pull the kids and things, but, and I've had more to do with horses, but I've never had to travel by dog team, but those that have done it have told me that they were, you could travel farther and faster in good conditions with a dog team than you could with yeah, a horse with and a the, black horse. We went to the, Dad used to trot in the winter when he was, uh, only in the in the winter in the summertime, as a, as a paid ranger, and then in the winter he trapped. You see, mm -hmm. and I I left Grovedale here at uh, right in this place. We went to the to Ball Mountain, about 25 miles from the dog team, and that was just a well. We were played out, but they weren't. <laughs> and that how long did that take? Well, it, take, it took about, uh, about six hours. You couldn't do that on a horse no, unless, no. unless you're ready to get rid of a horse. You just, just go, go, go all the time. And what kind of trail would that be? What kind of conditions? Well, this was this was a good trail. It was a, a hard, it had been a Chinook and Crows, you know, and really a nice trail, but uh, when there's the snow was fairly deep. You could still get along, along way better than uh, the average horse. The mm -hmm. horse wouldn't wouldn't plug through snow that deep, not for very many miles, and he'd be tired, tired out. And the dogs, they just they're in a they're in a long string, you know, <laughs> and just keep on hooking one, put them in the back. Um, one breaking trail. Yeah, okay. and they just go all the time. How much could they pull or, or haul in terms of weight in, in good conditions? Oh, be a hundred, at least a hundred pounds, yeah. At least. And you say sometimes uh, Pete would go out in the winter with the dogs as part of the forestry ranger job? No, it's not, when the, he was a ranger for how long, how many years until he had just in summer? He was a ranger only in summer, about. Oh, just, I don't know. I don't know how many years. Uh, quite a, well, just a few years when he moved out here. And then he went on permanently. Yeah. All the rangers went on permanently. But uh, in the winter time, he had to go to the, all the sawmills then. Uh, but he he didn't have a, have a truck then. He's get on the road and hitch it. We also had cattle. Not very many, but we had, had uh, enough for our own and our own milk and made, we made butter and uh, that sort of thing too. And chickens. And you know, so we'd have our own 
Okay. So milking the cow was one more thing you had to do morning and night. I think you did it. Was it you? I don't think I did very much of that. Well, that was part of it. I, I should well, I, I should say for the tapes purposes that the you is is Fred Como. <laughs> yeah. Just injured Dorothy, but Fred is the other voice on the tape. Well, mm -hmm. when he when I couldn't get out of it, I'd milk the cow. <laughs> <laughs> they got to be milked. Didn't you? <laughs> And you say you 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 liked living out there. You said yes, I did. Compared to well, you're not you're not one of those people like myself or Alan that has to live in town. But but yeah. what did you like about it compared to that kind of uh, living in town? No, no. Like, what, what did you like about it? for someone that's never tried that lifestyle? Describe what you liked about it. Well, it was. Uh, just a natural way of living out there, and uh, we had uh, we had good neighbors, and we got together quite often. That woman got you know that would make quilts and things like that, and, and we all we all got so got along very good. And, you, you'd you know, be you'd be quite a, a ways from a doctor or a hospital. Did that worry you back then? Yes, we were quite a ways. And, it never was, never had uh, any bad effects. Though we never had any uh, anything that we couldn't handle. You know, there's uh, there's some people who are in a district. There's usually somebody that can can help along with those kind of things. But we we did eventually have a group of women that came around to visit and uh, check on things. I forget what they're called. The nurses, uh, there was a couple of nurses traveled around. What did they call them? They, uh, uh, they had a couple of nurses and they traveled around different ways and uh, they had a van one and a truck yeah, one time. Yeah, we call, called them the van girls. The van girls, yeah. Yes. They were, they, they gave religious instruction to them. Vaccinations. So we wouldn't grow up to be heathens. And <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, yeah, they watched that very close. <laughs> Were they successful for the most part? Well, uh, I guess <laughs> partly. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'd be like a health unit nurse now, I guess. Or they'd be like a health unit nurse now, I guess. Yeah, that's something like that. The people that do inoculations and things like that. Uh, well, what if you did break an arm or, or cut oh, yourself? That uh, happened, I'm sure, more than once, didn't it? Long haul to town, then, <laughs> I imagine. Yep. They get to, get you to town somehow. I'm thinking about There, <coughs> there was a, how, how early did the ferry come in so that you could... Uh, the ferry come in. Well, uh, what was the ferry in a week when we come out out here? Well, they had a ferry <coughs> right along, didn't they? Yeah. In the summertime. Yeah. Well, we we had a well, I had a forged one at one time or two or three times because the water was too low for the ferry. But uh, the, the ferry was. Uh, in until the bridge, first bridge. And in the winter time, they had a had a log bridge when the, the the lumber companies would haul the lumber across. I suppose there'd be some time in the spring at breakup where you couldn't get across. Yeah, there was yeah, a time. Yeah, a bad yes. time. Bad time. Yes. And a rowboat. <coughs> you wouldn't go unless you had to, I imagine. No, not, not really, not, not, not much they had to. Sometimes a person had to, they were sick or something, and, uh, but have to fit in. Can you remember any of those times? Any specific examples of people getting sick or injured or having to go to town? If I could just, uh, 
remember like I should be able to. <laughs> no, I know it's hard to do on the spot like that. It either okay. comes in your mind or... Yeah. I know there was cases, many. Do you think of anybody that had to cross uh, because no. of the illness or something? Broken legs or anything? Well, what about your dad? Was he, uh, was he ever, uh, he just never, he never got sick? <laughs> until well, he got, until he got cancer, and then that was it. But, uh, but I'm I'm thinking out alone. I know for a lot of people, being alone out on a horse for for weeks on end out in the bush would be something they worry about. He just never got sick. He, I never heard him getting sick out in the bush, or never went off a horse the wrong way or anything no. like that. He hardly ever got on the damn. Thing.